Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sunday to you. It's August 2nd, and it's time for another Sunday school lesson for our middle school and high schoolers. So let us pray as we get in the word of God. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for God continually hearing our prayers and watching over us and keeping us. God, we just pray for our time together that um, these lessons are helping um, our youth, helping anyone, God, um, stay connected to you, Lord. God, I pray for every household, every child, every um, situation. God, continue to work through these situations. Whatever people are in need of, I pray they will look to you uh, for that help and that encouragement. God, we thank you. Hear our prayer today and be with us during this lesson. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good to see you all again. Um, as we start our Sunday school lesson, um, I want to ask you the question, why do we need the church? Why do we need the church? Well, first of all, the church is us. The church is believers. It's not necessarily a building. That is why the church doesn't end when we don't go to a building. The church is within us. Uh, because of this COVID-19, um, the, we have, it's kept us from actually going into the church building, but the church has not stopped. It is still going on, um, and it's going on through platforms like this. So again, why do we need the church? Why do we need each other? Well, if we are the church, then we need each other. So I wanted to ask you all that because that's what our lesson is about today. Why do we need the church and why do we need each other? Who is the church? Sometimes things are better in a group, right? We need each other to grow spiritually in our lives and um, we need because we are the church. So we can't do this thing called church alone. God gave us each other to support one another, to encourage one another in this walk with him. Amen. So what I want to ask you all is how are you the church? How are you being the church to someone else? So today our lesson is going to talk about three things um, on how we should be the church for each other. So if we are the church, how do we help one another? You know, the uh, scripture tells us not to forsake the assembly of believers. Well, we can't assemble necessarily together as um, physically, but we can assemble through virtually. And so how are you staying connected virtually uh, to your church and what God has called, um, called you as the church to be connected um, and to help one another as believers? So how can you as the church help one another? Well, our scriptures today come from Ephesians um, chapter 3, uh, 14 through 17. And in this, Paul is uh, praying for the Ephesians in this scripture. And so this is part of what he does as the, as the church. Um, there may not have been a physical building at that time, but as the church, he was praying for the Ephesians during that time. So the first thing we can do for each other as the church, why we need the church, is to pray for one another. Philippians 4 and 6, as Paul is also talking to us in, tells us to pray about everything, all things. All the time we are to be praying for everything. There's nothing we should leave off the table when we're praying to God. So we are to, uh, if we are to be praying for everything, so we are to be praying not just for ourselves, but for other people as well. Uh, we are to pray for others, not just our own needs. Um, you know, Jesus did that. Jesus should be our example on um, praying for one another. He prayed for everybody all the time. Um, he prayed for himself, but he made sure he was praying for others. So Jesus is our example on um, praying for one another as the body of Christ. Um, if we are truly the body of Christ, if we are truly um, Christians in the church and we love one another, we should be praying for one another. We are to also be praying for each other spiritually, their spiritual needs, not just physical. A lot of times we're praying for people, God provide, which 
we need God to do, or God protect, which we need God to do as well. But we should be praying for people's minds and hearts to be connected to God, praying that they have a better prayer life and a desire to be with God and a desire to grow in God. So um, let's also pray for people's spiritual needs as well. So I challenge you today in this first um, point, praying for one another as the church. That's what we are to do. So who can you pray for this week um, from Zion? Um, a lot of you all miss youth church, you miss Sunday school, you miss dance, you miss ushering, and all the things that we used to do together. Um, so I ask you, who has been on your mind from ch church, from youth church or any of our youth activities? Who can you pray for this week? They don't need to know, but just think of a friend who you have hung out with at church that you can pray for, all right? The second thing that we, um, as the church, why we are the church, as the church, we need to, number two, love each other. We are to love each other. Y'all know love is a feeling, but it's also an action. So we, we are to love one another, and that's the next thing that we are to do as the body of Christ. Um, we are loved by God first and foremost. So if he loves us first, we are to love each other as well. John 13, 34 says, a new commandment I give, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. Again, God is our example of loving each other. If he loved us first, why shouldn't we love each other? And then in this scripture for Ephesians, it says, so that, the, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love. So we are to be rooted in love for each other as the body of Christ. That's why we need the church, because we need to be to we need love and encouragement from each other. So if we love one another, we will pray for each other. And if we pray for each other, we will love one another. They go hand in hand. So the first thing as the body of Christ, why we need the church is to pray for each other. And then we need to love one another. And then we have to recognize um, when we pray for each other and we love each other, we have to recognize the third trait of being the church is that it's not about us. When we pray for each other and love on each other, it doesn't, it's never about us. And when we do that, we, we won't be selfish in our thinking and what we do. It becomes about God uh, because he is the head of the church. Amen. The church is about God and we are to be glorifying God in the things that we do as the body, as the church. And what that means, a lot of times I know you guys are like, what does that mean to glorify God? Um, that means that everything we do for God, everything that we do as the church, we give credit to God, that there's purpose in it and it all should go back to God in, in, in what we do for him. So whatever you do at church, as the church, whether loving someone, praying for someone, it shouldn't be about you. It shouldn't be about self or them seeing that I'm doing this for you, for that person. Or, you know, if you sing or if you serve at the church or whatever you do, you are to do it for God and not for selfish, or have a selfish motive behind it. All right. So number one, we are to pray for one another. Number two, we are to love with, on each other. And when we do that, number three, it won't be about us. And we will recognize that it's about God and giving God the glory. So as I close today, I want to ask you, who can you pray for this week at church? As we talked about earlier, I challenge you, who at church can you pray for um, that you've missed, that you miss seeing at youth church and and things like that, and church youth activities. Pray for one of those youth today. Number two, how can you love on someone this week? Who can you show love, um, love to from church? One of your friends, one of the, your buddies that you hang out with um, at choir or in usher board or dance or sisters keepers or whatever you do at church, um, Sons of Zion, you guys all have that friendship. How can you love 
on that other person, just checking up on them, just seeing how they're doing, sending them this video or sending them some encouragement. How can you love on someone from church this week? And if you do those two things, then you will glorify God. It will automatically happen because it won't be about you. Don't do it for selfish motives. Do it for God this week. Amen. So you want to know why we need the church? It's because we need one another. I pray that this lesson bless you this week. Go forth and be great. God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for teaching us about why we need the church. And we need the church because we need each other. So we just pray, God, that we will encourage each other. We will be a light to this dark world. Um, and uh, we will help strengthen each other during these times that we're in. We love you. We need you. And we honor you. Hear our prayers today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You all have a great week. God bless.